Hey guys, Drew Brashler with DBB Audio. I've noticed that a lot of people work off of the iPad solely. You know, the people that are using the X32 cores or the X32 racks, all of those people are using the iPad as their main work surface. Now, all of us that have like a full size or a producer or a compact, we have the luxury of being able to use both. The, the people that are using the core and the rack don't really have that luxury um, of having that physical work surface. So their main thing that they're using is the iPad. So I wanted to go through and do a full walkthrough on the X32 Mix app from Behringer. Now Behringer just released the version three of this. So if you haven't downloaded the newest version, make sure you do and also make sure to update your firmware on your board, which you will see last week's video is on that. Now let's just go ahead and dive in here. So we can have my, we can see that I have my, uh, uh, iPad mini here, and we're just going to go ahead and open up the app. Now, when you open up the app originally, it's going to open up in demo mode. So you'll want to have your iPad connected to the Wi-Fi network that your X32 is on. And I'm going to already think that you guys have your network configured with your IP addresses already written down and set up in the X32. Now, if you haven't done that, make sure you check out my blog post that you can see right here, and that will have some of the information on actually how to do that. But let's go ahead and dive into the app. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually go ahead and press the little I up here and it's going to open up this screen. Now this is the network configuration screen. So we're actually going to input our console address right here in the green. So my console address is 192.168.1.10. So once I have that, I can hit that and then press connect. And since I'm already connected to the Wi-Fi network, it's going to recognize that I have my console here. And and as you can see, I have some uh, meters going up on the top and everything like that. Now, this is the full work surface. And the thing that we're going to be going through today is the home tab. Now, the home tab is going to be where you're going to be doing all of your mixing from. And the thing that I love the most about this is it's multi-touch sensitive. So you can use all your fingers at the same time and be able to adjust all the faders at the same time. So. Let's go ahead and just give you a quick walkthrough of this. So we can see here up at the top that we have our home, detail, effects, scenes, meters, recorder, routing, monitor, and the setup button. So basically to go through these, all we have to do is just click between them and it will go to the next thing, effects, we have scenes. And so we're gonna jump back into the home. Now we can see that we have eight faders here. Now the eight faders are configured by what you have selected up here. So we can have channels one through 32, auxes, effects returns, buses, and our matrix section and the mains, and then also our DCAs. So we can see that we, when we click on one of these boxes, it pulls up all of the faders here. Now the other cool thing is, like I was saying, that this is touch sensitive with multi-touch. So we can take our three fingers here and turn up all three of these and adjust them. Now one thing is that we can't just touch on the actual fader and expect it to snap there. You actually have to go touch the physical fader and raise it up or down. Um, the next thing that we're going to see here is sends on fader. Now, those people that are gonna be running monitor mixes, this is going to be very, very useful for. So when you click sends on fader, we can see that we have all of our mix buses right here. So one all the way through 16. So if we click on one and say this is monitor number one, and you were wanting more electric guitar, you can just go ahead and turn it up or more acoustic guitar we can turn that up and so this is going to be how you're going to do all of your monitor mixing and you can also have one of your iPads up on the stage for your musicians to be able to select the monitor that they're in and turn things up or down the next thing that we have here is auto mixing now auto mixing is a new feature that Behringer released which is on channels 1 through 8 now there's two auto mix groups there's an X and a Y which we can see right here X and Y and basically if we configure one of the channels to be in one of the groups Groups, to enable the auto mixing, all we have to do is just press X or Y, and you can select both of them at the same time. And so I will go ahead and cover that in a different video. Mute groups is gonna be the next thing that we have here. So if we were wanting to set up our mute groups and mute all of the channels at once, we could go ahead and press mute group one or whichever one that we wanna have selected. Now to edit these, all we have to do is click the edit button and then we can click on the group that we want to assign to and I'm just going to assign channels one through 16 here. 
And once we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and hit the close button. And now when I hit the edit button again, if I press that, it will mute all the channels that I have associated with that group. Now, if you do end up having this sitting here, if you press mute, it'll just pull this up. So we wanna make sure that once we're done editing the mute group, that you do hit the edit button. The next thing we have down here is show solos. This basically is going to be very beneficial if your front of house engineer has a wireless in-ear pack that he has with him that you can connect into the back of the console via the control room outputs. Um, and when you go ahead and solo something on the iPad, Pad, it would queue up in the in-ears that your front of house engineer has, which would be very useful for someone who's not working on a physical work surface. So if you don't have in-ears and you are mixing off the iPad, I would definitely suggest doing that. That way you can queue up some stuff and you even have some volume controls in your monitor section up here, which will go on to a different video for. So we're gonna go ahead and undo the solo and turn that off. Lastly, we have lock mutes. Now this is going to be a very beneficial button when you're actually doing your live show and you don't wanna accidentally reach for a fader and accidentally hit the mute button instead. Now there is a very big difference between hitting the fader and the mute button, but just in case we can go ahead and lock the mutes. Now once you do have the mutes locked, it is only locked on the iPad that you are currently mixing on. I can actually go to the board and still mute things, as you can see right here. Um, now also, other iPads that are running the app will also have their own lock mute button, and that is going to be independent for that app alone on that iPad. So if you want to lock all the mutes, you can't. But one thing, if you do have channels muted and you press lock mutes, you won't be able to unmute them hence the lock mutes. So just make sure that if you do lock the mutes, you aren't going to be trying to actually mute them. And you will also notice that when we have lock mutes, our mute groups are disabled. So that is a really quick walkthrough of the home tab. The next video that we're gonna be talking about is going to be in the detail tab. So make sure you watch next week and see the detail tab. Thank you so much.